Hi everybody. I hope that you are having a lovely Thursday. Um, welcome to this week's uh, Simply Sweet Stamping. I have a really fun project to share with you. Actually, it's not so much about the project as it is. Um, I want to share with you how you can make a custom size box. Um, it, uh, this week, I have been like crazy busy preparing for a vendor fair this Saturday. And I made a really cute little uh, frame. And uh, I know you're going to want to know, I got the frame from Dollar Tree. And all I did is I added a three and a half by five inch piece of designer series paper inside. And then I just decorated it up. Super easy peasy to make. So, but the project is not about this framed uh, decor piece. It's actually about a box for it to fit in. And so I thought I would share with you how to make your own box. I know for years I had absolutely no clue how to make a box. I was looking at uh, other people's videos and they would have all these really awesome measurements, but none of their measurements work for what I needed. So I'm going to share a really simple formula with you today. The project that I am making actually uh, uses the Sweet Strawberry Bundle. However, I have already done all the prep work for it because today I want the focus to be on showing you how to make a box. So let me get this out of the way, but this has been a really fun bundle to play with. Now, like I said, I wanted to make a box for this framed piece. So I needed to first find out what my measurements were in order to make the box. So I'm gonna use a formula, and I want you to jot this down, really easy formula, and all you do is you take the length and you add two times your depth, then that is gonna be for the length of your cardstock, and then you're gonna measure the width and then add two times your depth. Now let me explain what I mean by that. So for this frame, I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna measure it, and it actually measures about six and one quarter inches. However, I wanna give it a little bit of room. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, my length is gonna be six and a half inches. And then for my width, it's actually four and three quarters, but again, I wanna give it a little bit more room, so I'm gonna say it's five inches. So I have a length of six and a half, and I have a width of five inches. Now I need to determine my depth. All right, so the depth is actually just about maybe with the uh, frame, the easel, it's probably about five eighths of an inch, but that's a little tight. So I'm gonna make it a one inch tall box. Now, when you're doing this, we're used to cutting layers length times width, that's no problem. What is the trick is keeping in consideration the depth. So when you're doing a box, you gotta keep in mind that you're gonna have a side on each, you know, on, on both sides, on your width and on your length. So we got to, uh, to accommodate that. So using this formula, I took the length of six and a half inches. I added my depth two times, which is two inches. So it's gonna give me a length of eight and a half inches. And then for my width, remember it was five inches, and my depth, the height that I want it to be is one inch, but I need to do that twice because I have a top and a bottom to my box. So that's gonna be two more inches. So I have seven inches. So when I go to cut my cardstock, I'm gonna cut it to eight and a half by seven inches. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna pull a piece of cardstock out of the way, get it in here. And I'm gonna take my little trusty trimmer and we are going to cut this to eight and a half by seven. Now, I'm already working with an eight and a half piece of cardstock. So I'll, I don't have to worry about cutting that part. I just need to cut it seven inches. All right, so then what I'm gonna do is I would do the same thing for my green because I have a top and a bottom. And then next what I wanna do is I want to score it. So let me get my scoring tool out. And remember, I wanted the height of my box to be one inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna make the green piece my bottom. So I am gonna score all four sides at one inch. All right, so that is gonna be the base of my box. Next, what I wanna do is I wanna do the top of my box. 
However, I don't want it to be a really snug fit, so I'm gonna use a shim. Now, I've made a little shim, but you can just stick a piece of cardstock, kind of hold it there, rest your top piece against there, and what that will do is it will kind of shift over your cardstock just a sliver so that it fits nicely and not tight on the box. So again, I'm gonna score again at one inches on all four sides. Okay. So let me get this out of the way. Now to kind of save a little bit of time, I have already snipped up the sides on my the bottom of my box and the top of my box. And I also too is I took a circle punch and I just kind of cut out a little notch for one of the sides because I want a little bit of my the bottom of my box to show so I can get a little bit of that green, but also to make it a little easier to remove my lid. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm going to assemble my box. Let me get my glasses on so I can see better. Now I have already burnished all four sides and it's really, really important that you take a uh, bone folder and you really burnish the sides to get a nice crisp edges on your box. So now we are just going to assemble the box. And last side. All right, so before I do the lid of my box, I'm just gonna double check that my frame fits inside. Perfect, and I got just a little bit of wiggle room so that if I wanted to add some, wrap it up in tissue paper, I could do that. So now I'm going to do the top of my box. And same thing. I've already burnished it, all the sides, and we're just going to assemble the top. I see some of you are joining me. Hello, my friends, great to see you. Love it when you join me and craft with me. All right, one more. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of hold this together and I'm actually gonna put it on top just to double check. Now, if you see, because I used my shim, it is a nice, beautiful fit. I don't have to struggle, it doesn't pucker or anything like that. All right, so now I'm gonna decorate the box. And actually, like I said, I have already done all the stamping already, but I am gonna share with you what I did to be able to create this box. So as you see, I've already done the box, the box base. And I took from the Regal's Designer Series paper, I took and cut out a four and a half by six inch piece of the Designer Series paper and glued it on top. So I'm gonna do that real quickly. And we're just gonna put that here on the center of the box because I want a little bit of a really pretty accent color. All right, so next what I did is I stamped two strawberries, punched them out, and I stamped two of the tops, the stems for my strawberries, and two leaves. And again, I just punched all of that out. I die cut using the stitched, um, the Stitch So Sweetly dies. I cut out a scalloped rectangle. I stamped on it with Daffodil Delight and with the Garden Green. So all I did is I assembled all of these pieces together for this really pretty top for my box. And I'm just gonna add dimensionals. Now I will tell you, I realized right before I hopped on, I do not have enough of this really pretty white ribbon. So I'm not gonna add the ribbon right now, but I think it's still a really cute little box. And there you go. So you can grab the project sheet over on my blog and it has, again, that formula for you as well as all the measurements that I used for this box today. And I wanna share with you, um, I don't know if y'all have seen, Stampin' Up! just did a refresh on their clearance rack. Some awesome, amazing deals, uh, some, uh, some retired holiday products. If you hadn't had a chance, go check it out. I ordered a few things myself. Um, what you may not realize is that there is a clearance rack, but then there is also a last chance sale. So there's also some deals over in that last chance sale. So go check that out. 
and today is the last day to get the ice cream corner project kit that I shared last week with you. I think I have two project kits left, so you can get that totally free with a $45 order or more in my online store. Just uh, look in the post for this video and you will see um, how to register for that and how to get that free kit. So guys, I have lots of stuff coming up in May and I look forward to crafting with you next Thursday. And so stay tuned because I got a lot of event, events posting really, really soon. So guys, until next week, y'all have a wonderfully blessed weekend. Bye guys. We'll see you next time.